Ferenc Szalasi Hungarian pronunciation Frank S. Sali the 6th of January 1897 to the 12th of March 1946 was the leader of the fascist Arrow Cross Party Hungarist movement the leader of the nation Nemzit Vezeto being both head of state and prime minister of the Kingdom of Hungary's government of national unity Nemzeti Asifogas Kormenia for the final six months of Hungary's participation in World War II, after Germany occupied Hungary and removed Miklos Horthy by force. During his brief rule, Shalasi's men murdered 10,000 to 15,000 Jews. After the war, he was tried and executed by the Hungarian court for war crimes and crimes against humanity committed during World War II. Topic. Early life <inaudible> <inaudible> Ancestry Born the son of a soldier in Kassa now Kosis in Slovakia of mixed Armenian the surname of his great-grandfather was Salashin, German, Hungarian one grandparent, Slovak and Russian ancestry. His Armenian ancestors settled down in Ebisfalva, Transylvania during the reign of Prince Michael I Apafi. Shalasi's grandfather, who participated as a Hanvade in the Hungarian Revolution of 1848, married a German woman from Vienna, and their son, Ferenc Shalasi Sr. attended a military cadet school in Kassa and later became an official in the Hanvedzeg. Shalasi's brothers, Bella, Karoli and Rezo also served in the army. Shalasi's mother was the Greek Catholic Erzabet Shakmer born 1875, who had Slovak and Russian roots. She provided religious education to her sons. Shalasi once said, I received the power of belief and faith in God through breast milk. My mother made to drink faith through and through me. Ferenc Shalasi lived with his mother until 1944. Military career Shalasi followed in his father's footsteps and joined the army at a young age. He finished elementary studies in his birthplace, then attended the military academy in Kasheg, Morosvasorheli now Targu Muresh in Romania and continued studies in Kismerton. Finally, he finished his military education in the Theresian Military Academy of Wiener Neustadt, where he was promoted to lieutenant in 1915. He eventually became an officer and served in the Austro-Hungarian Army during World War I. He served on the front line for 36 months. At the end of the war, he was promoted to first lieutenant and was involved in the 2nd Regiment of K. U. K. Tyrolean Rifle Regiments, widely known as Kaiserjäger. He stationed near Murano and Lake Garda in the Italian front. Later the regiments were ordered to the north to Verdun at the last days of the war. For his service, he was honored with third class of the Order of the Iron Crown. Returning to Hungary, Shalasi performed courier service for the newly formed Ministry of Foreign Affairs after the Aster Revolution in November 1918. Upon the dissolution and breakup of Austria-Hungary after the war, the Hungarian Democratic Republic and then the Hungarian Soviet Republic were briefly proclaimed in 1918 and 1919 respectively. The short-lived communist government of Bela Kun launched what was known as the Red Terror, and ultimately involved Hungary in an ill-fated war with Romania. In 1920, the country went into a period of civil conflict with Hungarian anti-communists and monarchists violently purging the nation of communists, leftist intellectuals, and others they felt threatened by, especially Jews. This period was known as the White Terror. And, in 1920, after the pullout of the last of the Romanian occupation forces, it led to the restoration of the Kingdom of Hungary Magyar Karalisag under Regent Miklos Horthy. During that time, Shalasi was still an apolitical person, and he did not involve himself in events beyond the general interest. In 1920-21, Shalasi finished non-commissioned officer training school in Hajemasker. Following that, he served in the 13th Infantry Regiment in Miskolc. In 1923, he enrolled to the General Staff Office's training course at the Ludovica Military Academy. For his outstanding achievements, he was promoted with priority to captain in 1924. In 1925, Shalasi entered the General Staff of the Restored Kingdom. He fulfilled his mandatory field grade task in 1929 at the 11th Infantry Regiment in Debrecen as a company commander. 
According to some memoirs by former subordinates, Shalasi was a popular and beloved superior among the infantry. His fellow officers acknowledged his military skills and literacy, but some others thought Shalasi was pedantic and autonomous. According to his future Minister of Defense, Karoli Baregfi, Shalasi's name among the general staff was a concept of excellent hunting and tactics, but also a concept with the regards of honesty, truthfulness, and puritanism. By 1933, Shalasi had attained the rank of major and became chief of the 1st Hanvade Mixed Brigade's general staff in Budapest. Political career First steps in politics Around this time, when Gyula Gombos came to power, Shalasi became fascinated with politics and often lectured on Hungary's political affairs. By this time, the hitherto apolitical Shalasi was a fanatical right-wing nationalist and a strong proponent of Hungarism, advocating the expansion of Hungary's territory back to the borders of Greater Hungary as it was prior to the Treaty of Trianon, which in 1920 codified the reduction in the country's area by 72%. In 1933, to summarize his views, he published his 46-page pamphlet with the title A Magyar Alam Felépítéen Ektur, Plan for the Building of the Hungarian State, and sent his work to several politicians. Soldiers and military officers were banned from politicizing, thus Shalasi was sentenced to 20-day detention and expelled from the general staff by a military court. After his release, Shalasi was ordered to the 14th Infantry Regiment in Eger, where served as staff officer then first adjutant. Shalasi gradually became disillusioned with the army and requested resignation from that in October 1934. On 1 March 1935, Shalasi left the army in order to devote his full attention to politics, after which time he established the Party of National Will, a nationalistic group. It was eventually outlawed by the conservative government for being too radical. Unperturbed, Shalasi established the Hungarian National Socialist Party in 1937, which was also banned. However, Shalasi was able to attract considerable support to his cause from factory workers and Hungary's lower classes by pandering to their aggrieved sense of nationalism and their virulent antisemitism, after Germany's union. And with Austria in 1938, Shalasi's followers became more radical in their political activities, and Shalasi was arrested and imprisoned by the Hungarian police. However, even while in prison Shalasi managed to remain a powerful political figure, and was proclaimed leader of the National Socialist Aero Cross Party a coalition of several right-wing groups when it was expanded in 1938. The party attracted a large number of followers, and in the 1939 elections, it gained 30 seats in the Hungarian parliament, thus becoming one of the more powerful parties in Hungary. Freed due to a general amnesty resulting from the Second Vienna Award in 1940, Shalasi returned to politics. When World War II began, the Aero Cross Party was officially banned by Prime Minister Paul Teleki, thus forcing Shalasi to operate in secret. During this period, Shalasi gained the support and backing of the Germans, who had previously been opposed to Shalasi because his Hungarist nationalism placed Hungarian territorial claims above those of Germany. <laughs> <laughs> Way to power Following the Nazi occupation of Hungary in March 1944, the pro German Dome Stoje was installed as Prime Minister of Hungary. The Aero Cross Party was then legalized by the government, allowing Shalasi to expand the party. When Stoje was deposed in August, Shalasi once again became an enemy of the Hungarian government and Regent Miklos Horthy ordered his arrest. In the meantime the Germans had become concerned that Horthy who had enough sense to recognize that the war was totally lost would succeed in surrendering to the Allies. They had, however, waiting in the wings, a perfect ally in Shalasi. When the Germans learned of the regent's plan to come to a separate peace with the Soviets and exit the Axis alliance, they kidnapped Horthy's son, Miklos Jr. and threatened to kill him unless Horthy abdicated in favor of Shalasi. Horthy abdicated and under duress signed a document giving legal sanction to an Arrow Cross coup. To quote Horthy's memoirs, A signature wrung from a man at machine gun point can have little legality. 
The Germans then pressured Parliament to install Chalassi as Prime Minister and Head of State. National leader Chalassi's government of national unity turned the Kingdom of Hungary into a client state of Nazi Germany formed on 16 October 1944 after Regent Miklos Horthy was removed from power during Operation Panzerfaust Eisenfaust 1. The Hungarian parliament approved the formation of a Council of Regency of three. On 4 November, Chalassi was sworn as leader of the nation He formed a government of 16 ministers, half of which were members of the Arrow Cross Party. While the Horthy Regency had come to an end, the Hungarian monarchy was not abolished by the Chalassi regime, as government newspapers kept referring to the country as the Kingdom of Hungary Magyar Karalasag, also abbreviated as M. Kier, although Magyarzig was frequently used as an alternative. Chalassi was an ardent fascist and his quisling government had little other intention or ability but to maintain fascism and to maintain control in Nazi-occupied portions of Hungary as the Soviet Union invaded. He did this in order to reduce the threat to Germany. Chalassi's aim was to create a one-party state based on his Hungarist ideology. Under his rule as a close ally of Germany, the Germans, with the assistance of the Chalassi government recommenced the deportation of the Jews, which had been suspended by Horthy. He organized the so-called International Ghetto. During that time some diplomats like Raoul Wallenberg gave protective passports to some Jews, which protected them from deportation. Germans argued they weren't valid according to international law, but Chalassi's government accepted them nevertheless. Two, his government promoted martial law, courts martial, executed those who were considered dangerous for the state and the continuation of the war. During Chalassi's rule, Hungarian tangible assets cattle, machinery, wagons, industrial raw material etc. were sent to Germany. He conscripted young and old into the remaining Hungarian army and sent them into hopeless battles against the Red Army. Chalassi's rule only lasted 163 days, partly because by the time he took power, the Red Army was already deep inside Hungary. On 19 November 1944, Chalassi was in the Hungarian capital when Soviet and Romanian forces began encircling it. By the time the city was encircled and the 102-day siege of Budapest began, he was gone. The leader of the nation, Nemzit Vezeto, fled to Zombadli on 9 December. By March 1945, Chalassi was in Vienna just prior to the Vienna Offensive. Later, he fled to Munich. Topic: <trial>, Trial and Execution. The Arrow Cross Party's cabinet, which had fled Hungary, was dissolved on the 7th of May 1945, a day before Germany's surrender. Chalassi was captured by American troops in Matzi on 6 May and returned to Hungary on 3 October. He was tried by the People's Tribunal in Budapest in open sessions began in February 1946, and sentenced to death for war crimes and high treason. Chalassi was hanged on 12 March 1946 in Budapest, along with two of his former ministers, Gabor Vina, Karoli Bereg Fee and the party ideologist Joseph Jera. The method of hanging was unusual. A large post had a rope attached to a hook at the top. Chalassi was marched up steps, placed with his back to the post, his legs and arms were tied, the noose placed around his neck, the rope tightened, and the steps were removed. Thirty-two photos of the hanging were donated to the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. Other photographs of the execution are on display in the Holocaust Room of the Budapest Jewish Museum. On 13 March 1946, the day after Chalassi's death, the National Council of People's Tribunals discussed the convicted politician's plea for mercy and recommended its refusal to Justice Minister Istvan Reis, when Chalassi and his ministers were already executed. Reis forwarded the decision to President Zoltan Tildy, who subsequently approved the death sentence and execution on 15 March 1946. Shalasi was buried in Rakowskarastor New Public Cemetery in the Budapest Capital District, Budapest, Hungary, Plot 298. In 2008, historian Thomas Kovács claimed the political department of the Hungarian State Police pro, predecessor of the feared secret police State Protection Authority falsified his name and birth certificate, and buried him as Ferenc Lukács in section 298 of the New Public Cemetery. 
Other historians, however, rejected this claim, since a written source could not be found. See also Cluj Ghetto Hungarian Tehranism